Four steps to follow in order to prepare your LNG ship to receive the very cold cargo. The slightest error and your cargo containment system may be damaged or lines may be blocked. This applies for the membrane type or the most spherical type. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Mustafa and I'm an LNG ship captain. After the first launch of the LNG ship from the shipyard or dry dock, the cargo tanks were open and they contain normal air or humid air. This normal air contains unwanted components that we don't want them inside our cargo tanks once we receive the LNG cargo. First one is the water or humidity content. The humidity needs to be removed in order to avoid water freezing during the cool down before loading. Second one is dioxide carbon or CO2 which frees at minus 60 degrees Celsius and becomes solid powder which can block our lines, strainers, valves, etc. The third one is the oxygen. We need to remove the O2 from our cargo tanks in order to avoid any mixture with the flammable methane. The oxygen in the air is 20.9% and for the fire or explosion to occur, it requires only 11% O2. To eliminate these components, the cargo tanks need to go through four operations. The first step is drying the cargo tanks. The objective of this operation is to dry the cargo tanks, obviously, i.e. lower the dew point to minus 20 degrees Celsius. What does it mean, dew point? Dew point is the atmospheric temperature below which water droplets begin to condense and dew can form. So in all operations, we use two lines in each cargo tank. The first one is the loading line or filling line, which runs until the bottom of the cargo tank. And the second line is the vapor line, which is located at the tank stop. Onboard LNG ships, we have plant called the IGG, short for inert gas generator. This equipment is used to produce the dry air by passing the humid air or normal air through dryers to achieve minus 45 degrees Celsius dew point. The dry air is sent from the IG plant to the cargo tanks, but first we need to decide from where we introduce this dry air, from the top through the vapor line or from the bottom through the liquid line. Rule of thumb, in summertime, the dry air is more likely heavier than the humid air. Hence, it is introduced from the liquid line in order to create the piston effect and push out the humid air from the vapor line and vice versa. During winter time, the cold air is heavier than the dry air, so we introduce the dry air from the top to push out the humid air from the bottom towards the forward mast. This operation takes approximately 20 hours depending on the size of the tanks and the IG plant flow. The performance criteria is dew point minus 20 degrees Celsius measured by the dew point meter from the three different levels, upper, middle, and lower sampling point. It is necessary to lower the dew point of the cargo tanks to minus 20 degrees Celsius in order to avoid the formation of corrosive agents which is produced during the next stage. Once all checks are completed for the cargo tanks, you do the same for the lines and the machineries. The second operation is inerting. The LNG is mainly methane, which is highly flammable. For the fire or explosion to occur, you need to gather three elements, fuel, oxygen, heat, which is frequently referred as the fire triangle. Add in the fourth element, which is the chemical reaction, and you actually have the fire tetrahedron. The important thing to remember is to take away only one element and you will not have fire. The main reason of the inerting operation is to avoid gathering the four elements of the fire triangle. So from the tanks containing the air to the tanks containing the methane, we have this intermediate operation to break the fire triangle. So basically during the inerting operation, we use the IG, which is the ion gas produced by the same plant for drying, but involving more equipment. Quick explanation how it works. It takes diesel oil, burn it, the fumes are washed and cooled down, which gives us inert gas, mainly nitrogen and carbon dioxide with almost no oxygen. The IG contains and want components like sulfur and nitrogen oxides, which are corrosive agents. This is why we start with drying operation to avoid the formation of corrosion when these components are in contact with humidity or water. In this operation, we need to take out all the air from the cargo tanks and replace it by the IG in order to lower the auto content and dry more the cargo tanks. The ion gas is heavier than the air, hence it is introduced to the cargo tanks from the bottom via the liquid line and the dry air is displaced from the top via the vapor line toward the forward mast. The inerting operation is complete when all the air is removed from the cargo tanks and the sample points show less than 2% oxygen and dew point around minus 40 degrees Celsius. The inerting takes approximately 20 hours depending on the IG plant flow and the cargo tanks volume. And same as previous operations, when you complete the cargo tanks, you proceed with the cargo lines and machineries. All the previous steps to be complete at sea and before arriving to the load port. Before going further, please like the video. Apparently, it helps the algorithm to grow this channel and spread more LNG knowledge. So once you are alongside LNG terminal for the first time after shipyard or dry dock, you need to do the next operation, which is called the gazing up. In the previous operations, we removed the humidity, which frees at zero degrees Celsius. We removed the oxygen, which is source of fire. And now we need to remove the carbon dioxide and fill up the cargo tanks with warm methane in preparation for the next step. The ion gas contains 14% of CO2 which frees at minus 60 degrees Celsius and becomes solid powder which blocks our lines, trainers, valves, etc. To do that, the terminal supplies liquefied natural gas at slow rate through a small line called the spray line. By opening and closing couple valves, we direct the LNG to a machine called the LNG vaporizer. 
This equipment evaporates the LNG from liquid at minus 160 degrees Celsius to a vapor at plus 20 degrees Celsius and send it to the cargo tanks. But after completion of inerting, all the cargo lines, spray lines are filled with inert gas which contains CO2. So to avoid the formation of this solid powder, the line between terminal and the LNG vaporizer must be inerted with nitrogen supplied from the anti generator which is CO2 free. So once the LNG is evaporated and sent to the cargo tank stop via the vapor line since the methane is lighter than the inert gas. Hence natural gas will create the piston effect and push the IG to the tank's bottom via the filling line towards the terminal. In this operation, the hydraulic compressor is used in order to speed up the operation by taking out the IG from the bottom and sending it to shore. And the operation is completed when the methane is 99% and CO2 is 1% at all levels. This operation takes approximately 20 hours as well. And again, depending on the LNG tank's volume, the LNG vaporizer capacity and the LNG supply rate from the terminal. After completion, you proceed with gassing up of the cargo lines and the machineries. Regarding the equipment needed for this operation, we need the hydrocarbon and CO2 gas meters. The LNG is very cold cargo with temperature at minus 160 degrees Celsius. If you introduce it to the cargo tanks at plus 20 degrees Celsius, it will damage the cargo containment system and it will create a strong evaporation that we cannot control. So this is why we do the fourth step, which is the cooling down. The LNG cargo tanks are cooled down before loading to a specific temperature as per the cargo containment system manufacturer. If it is membrane type, and then the vapor inside the cargo tanks must be lowered to minus 130 degrees Celsius. If it is most spherical tank, and then the temperature of the equation of each cargo tank must be lowered to minus 110 degrees Celsius. Stay tuned for a future video about the components of these containment systems and the reason behind this specific temperature. To avoid missing it, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. So how we cooled out the cargo tanks? The same energy used to supply the vaporizer now is directed to the spray nozzles inside the cargo tanks. These nozzles spray the energy inside the cargo tanks in order to lower the temperature. In the meantime, this will generate vapor and raise the pressure inside the cargo tanks. Hence, we'll use the HD compressor in order to take out this excess of vapor and send it to the terminal. The cooling down operation takes approximately 15 to 18 hours and is completed when the vapor temperature reaches minus 130 degrees Celsius for the membrane type and minus 110 for the equature for the most type. After all these steps, now you've prepared your tanks and are ready to be loaded with LNG. So for loading, I'll prepare a separate video for the steps how to load the LNG cargo. But before that, you may check out this video here where I explain why the LNG is transported in liquid form. Thanks for watching and see you next week.